So most of the time when people are having a problem with their furnace, it kind of narrows down to a few of pretty common problems. But mm -hmm. I was wondering today if you could maybe share some stories over your 41 years of experience of, have you ever found some really strange reasons why a furnace yeah. stopped working? Yeah, there were a couple that kind of come to mind. And one is I can remember as a young technician, and what's strange is when you don't have the experience, there's a lot of things that make you scratch your head, you know, until you gain that experience. I was, it was winter time and I'm working, it was early winter though, cold weather was there. and. and and uh, I go to a, a no heat call at a mobile home and you get to the mobile home and it's cold inside. I mean, it's in the 50s inside the mobile home. And I'm, I'm working on a mobile home now. Mobile home, when, and you want to look at the burner, little observation window, literally this big and the size of a quarter. You're peering in there and you see the burner come on. It's burning. It's lit. Everything looks absolutely normal it looks perfectly normal the fan comes on like it's supposed to and will run for just a little while but would turn off because it isn't maintaining a temperature rise on the furnace it, it's not hot enough it's not staying hot enough but everything appears to be just fine and you scratch your head and you think about it and you literally just start taking things apart you know you're there to fix it you, know, you got to figure out there's something you have to tell yourself there is something wrong here i take this all apart literally take it all apart i've never taken one apart before you know i'm taking it all apart and i find the tiniest little spider web in the orifice there was only one orifice for the main burner and it would allow enough gas to go through and burn and have the appearance of burning however it wasn't burning enough gas to maintain the temperature rise and you you take that little spider web out and presto changeo it absolutely worked perfectly after that and and then you start thinking about it you're going well wait a minute it's been it's early winter so it hasn't gotten super cold yet so now it's getting colder and it shows up enough that it, there's not enough heat being generated to warm the house since then now almost once a year, you can almost say, well, this is the spider web I find this year. And it, it's not just on mobile home furnaces, it's on all, all furnaces, you know, but you can get a little, spy, tiny little spider web. A and it's spider enough. web where? Like in where a uh, This particular one was inside through? the main burner orifice. And, and there's only one on a mobile home furnace. On, on residential furnaces, most residential furnaces, there are multiples, but you can still have this same problem. If you've got a burner that isn't burning right, or in the case of a mobile home, it's the, the only burner, but uh, it's affected by this time. You literally clean it out and it's uh, smaller than a Q-tip and it's enough to cause havoc. You know, so like I said, once you figure it out the first time, now you yeah. see it almost every looking year. For it. It's one of those things when we, you've got younger technicians, you're always saying, there's this. Oh, no, then there's that. And then, well, look at this. And you sound like a genius because, you know, you'll, uh, as <laughs> yeah. odd as it sounds, yeah, it's just a tiny little spider web in the orb. And that happens when a furnace, like it's turning on and everything looks fine, but it's just mm -hmm. not generating enough heat. Yeah. So I don't know how many folks out there listening are have mobile home furnaces, but uh, that's a very common thing mm -hmm. uh, around here. And another one was an air conditioning one, was just something that's kind of kind of strange. Is uh, I'm working on this air conditioner, and I realize there has been serious damage to the air conditioner around the base of the air conditioner. It's a typical air conditioner is copper tubes with an aluminum fin. Uh, on the outside of it. These aluminum fins are completely destroyed. I mean, it's been cr something corrosive, acid. If you were to take an air conditioner and dip it in acid, you'd think this would be the, uh, this would be what you would get. Totally destroyed. Obviously, uh, an animal has been urinating on the base of this air conditioner. So you have to go tell the homeowner, you know, that we've got this problem, that the family pet probably has destroyed the air conditioner. I mean, literally destroyed the air conditioner. The interesting part is you get to meet the dog who did this. <laughs> and it was this tiny little fluffy dog. This little bitty dog. I don't know. I don't know why, but in my mind, I was expecting like a rather robust right. canine, which would explain why only the bottom four inches of the air conditioner were destroyed. The, and so, and this, so then why is that a problem? The, the bottom four inches fins or whatever are destroyed. So now what, what does that 
Well, it, it was serious damage. It literally ate all the aluminum fins off and even was eating into the copper. So the copper was yeah. paper thin. And there are times, I can think of times I've been able to repair it. You've got a rather ugly section of coil down at the very bottom. And, and see, some cabinets have metal jackets on them that kind of protect the the mm -hmm. uh, the coil and others the coil is absolutely exposed. exposed you know, mm -hmm. totally. But the interesting part that is now again with experience over 40 years, I've seen that multiple times. That doesn't surprise me at all. However, <laughs> the interesting part is every single time I've found that type of damage to an air conditioner, every single time the offending canine has been a little uh. bitty dog. It's it's always been a little bitty dog. I've never had it happen with the with a uh, you know, German Shepherd Great yeah. Dane. But it does go to show you, you know, a, a dog urinating in the same place every day or probably multiple times a day is not a good thing. But when uh, you let out your dog and it kind of runs around to the side of the house, maybe you should follow him one day and make sure it, that it's it, not. It, it's worth taking note of. Would you like to hear one more? One more story. It's a, uh, this was a long time ago because I was working on a floor furnace. And if any of you are familiar with floor furnace, maybe Google it. I don't know what it shows, but a floor furnace is a central furnace. Remember, you might remember your grandparents' house had this floor grate in the middle of the house, about three foot square. And it would be smoking hot. I had to be careful not to walk. My grandparents it. or your grandparents? Because I don't remember. That would be my grandparents. But you have this floor furnace. It's a, it's just a self-contained little heater that drops into a 30 to 36 inch square hole in the middle of the house. It was a very primitive way of heating a home with natural gas, but it was a way of doing it. Well, this uh, particular furnace, I'm, I'm on this call. I'm a, I'm a young Raymond back in the day, and, <laughs> and the, the, it was. Uh, lighting hard, meaning it kind of was exploding, you know, the, the gas burner was lighting aggressively. Well, let me go check it out. So I'm crawling under this house. I'm in a, in the crawl space of the house and this crawl space was super tight. I'm, I'm literally, what do they call it when you're crawling through? There, there are code restrictions against this now, you know, you have to have easy egress, you know, from the furnace, but this was not the case. And so I am pushing, I'm literally having to push my toolbox in front of me as I go. You know, I'm crawling, crawling, push the This toolbox. is my nightmare, by the way. If, so if you're claustrophobic, this yeah, is Yeah, this is, the, I could not. I, I was, so. So I'm making my way to the furnace, which, you know, these old houses, you sometimes, they've been added on to multiple times. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm finding my way. So I'm getting close to the furnace. I'm getting close to the furnace. And I'm pushing my toolbox in front of me. And I hear a click and a What I'm hearing is the sound of natural gas being, being, escaping from the gas valve. I'm here, but I'm, I'm, I'm too far away to be able to turn the, the, the furnace <laughs> off. So all I could do was I ducked down behind my toolbox and then, oh, woof, you know, the, the natural yeah. gas eventually lighted abruptly. But it, I just remember that panic and fear of, oh, my gosh, I'm stuck in here. <laughs> you know, so, so uh, but we fixed that one. We fixed it. What would happen with those old floor furnaces was they're in a crawl space, a rather dirty, damp environment, right? Mm -hmm. They have cast iron burners. And over time, the cast iron burners would rust and they would get rust in the, in the spreader bars and in the, even in the main part of the burner. So they just wouldn't hardly burn. You know, they'd be full of rust. When they would try and ignite, they would... Uh, light rather aggressively but i could clean it up you know a, a hacksaw blade and a wire brush and you can clean it up and good as new after that but uh easy but I, peasy yeah but that <laughs> that time of finding myself stuck up <laughs> yeah I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get exploded here i'm glad everything worked out okay and you still have your eyebrows and and after that <laughs> your hair just didn't quite grow That's the right. same My way hair just didn't right after that. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of good memories, you know, those yeah. were, uh, that's one of the things I love about this job. Yeah. You never know what you're going to see. Thanks, Ed.